Hey, how's it going? I'm Anna Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so I deliberately waited until the Saturday to do this one so I could do it post the holiday with the cute friend. So I dropped the cute friend off at the coach station so they could go home. Um, well, we, we arrived about 12. Uh, the coach was already there, so they then got themselves checked in and got on, which kind of like they should have done the other way around, because as soon as they ca co <laughs> the case was on the coach, I then got all anxious that they needed to be on the coach as well, which is just, it's how my brain works. Sometimes um, I'm very paranoid when it comes to belongings um, as a child my things were tampered with and stolen a lot so i've never kind of lost that sort of paranoia that if you're not keeping an eye on your things something will happen to your things like even if it's not stolen it could get like dropped or knocked or broken um accidentally whilst you're not looking like your things are always going to be safest when you are with them um so like i know their case went underneath the coach but in my head it's all like yeah, but now you also need to be on the coach. Um, so in, in hindsight, we probably should have like held back a little bit. There was no rush for them to get themselves checked in other than to get themselves a decent seat. Um, there we go. Uh, but other than that, <laughs> that rather negative part, because like I, I'm, I'm one of those where it's not so much that I hate goodbyes, um, as I just prefer the goodbyes to be short and simple and kind of over with because once the goodbye has done you can then deal with the fact that that person is not there anymore um, or not like with you for the next spate of time and you're not going to see them for a little while um, regardless as to you know assuming this is a normal goodbye and not a good final goodbye um, but I like for like just a normal goodbye I prefer them to be like short and brief and, and, and over with um, so that you can then kind of deal with that person not being around anymore opposed to sort of slow more drawn out more you know more emotional kind of goodbyes because it's kind of like I'm very I prefer to deal with my emotions privately rather than like make a big sort of display of them um, so yeah, I was I was definitely very sad to see them leave. Um, they did get off the coach, which made me very paranoid because again, they they left their stuff on the coach. Why, why, why would you do that? Um, and they uh, by the sort of time they sort of like came off, I was I was feeling a little bit like a little bit teary, but I didn't sort of like say anything to them because I was kind of like get back on the coach with your things. Please get back on the coach with your things. Um, just because, like, as I said, some, like, for me, mentally, it's easier to sort of deal with, like, a short, quick goodbye, and then you can process, whereas, like, a slow, long, drawn-out goodbye means that, A, you have to process a lot more, and B, you're delaying the process of processing, um, whereas, you know, if you've sort of, you, you've done the processing part, and then you can just sort of, yeah, it's my compartmentalizing nature, I think, a lot of it is. I'm, I like to sort of like go douche, to douche, to douche, to douche, to douche, because my way of dealing with things is to, is to be practical. <laughs> I am too practical for my own good. Anyway, let's ignore the goodbye part of it. That, that, that's, you don't know, that's the sad bit. Um, so it was a great few days. Um, lots of adventures were had. Um... So we managed to, well, so, so our plan was always to do a food shop and then get back to the place. We don't, neither of us drive. So we got a bus to the, um, to do the food shop. And then the plan was to get a taxi to the place uh, because it was going to be late um, and dark. And we hadn't, you know, had an opportunity to sort of like scout the location so that we would know how to get there or anything like that. So yeah apparently taxis don't run in the evening in the the place that we've gone to pick up the food it took us at least 20 minutes to actually get hold of the of a taxi that would actually come and pick us up um 
And then we had to wait at least 15 minutes for that taxi to arrive because they had, were, were coming from a distance away. Um, we then had to pay £25 for the privilege, which is a lot. But like by this point, we were tired. We tried so many places. We'd been like having Uber going in the background as well. And just like there was nothing. So at the end of the day, we just wanted to get there. Um, and we were like, you know what, let's just, let's just not worry about it. Let's draw a line under it. Let's just, let's just do it. Um, place was lovely, like really nice, sort of, it felt like a holiday place. It felt like a cabin. Um, I mean, most of the holiday places that I went to growing up were more like, um, caravans or chalets, but this felt more like a cabin. It was, uh, it was very nice. It was, um, great sort of views from the, the balcony areas and we, ha we had breakfast out on the front balcony every single morning because the weather was beautiful <laughs> like it's March and the, the it wasn't it wasn't warm warm in the mornings but it was pleasant and then it was fairly warm like the, the afternoons and the days we got really lucky with the, the, the weather March can be very hit and miss, and I know that because my birthday is in March, so I'm very aware of what the weather is like in March. But we got we got really lucky with weather, really nice, beautiful weather all week. Um, so because of all the hassle of the first uh, first evening, we instead of doing one of the sort of day trips we kind of suggested, we kind of went, you know what, just just to have a lazy day. Let's just stay at the cabin um let's go for a walk and sort of scout the location a little bit so we can work out how to do day trips for the following two days um but let's just just basically go let we're, more, we're not going to rush around we're just going to take everything at our own pace which is what we did so we took a hour long walk in the morning um obviously not really knowing where we were going <laughs> um we didn't get lost exactly so um where we were staying was right by a resort with a golf it's a golf resort essentially is what it is um and we found a bridge that took us from the area that we were staying onto that with like a little note saying just be respectful of the golfers and you're free to like walk along just stick stick to the actual path it's absolutely fine so we're like well we have basically have permission to be here as long as we're not annoying the golfers so that's what we did so we were initially kind of like, okay, this will probably cut us through to one of the two um, one of the two uh, bus stops that we know are in this area that we can use for the bus that we need, or the buses that we need. Um, so we were initially, we were trying to sort of like head towards the, the village one rather than heading towards the, the golf course because we were like, well, that, that seems more logical to us. I say village one, it's not really a village one, just there was a church building so um but it turns out we couldn't sort of like cut through there so we had to go through to the resort so we took um i think about 40 minutes to actually get to the bus station that was just outside of the the resort's entrance and we were like okay let's time it on the way back we got a little bit lost on the way back we, we missed a turning that we should have taken um and we took a longer way around fortunately it was early enough in the morning and the right day of the week there weren't really anyone out playing golf at that time so we did like sneakily cut across some of the greens but like um I mean, as i said we we were in that kind of situation where it's like we, we we shouldn't have taken that route but we were also not in the way of anybody playing so we just made a note not to go that way again and you know we didn't so it was fine from there um then on the second day, we decided to uh, catch the bus to Sultash uh, so that we could go to the adventure golf that they had there, um, taking little plush Montgomery Gator with us so we could play Monty Golf just in our own heads and have fun. Um, and that ended up being a bit more of an adventure. So we knew um, there was another way to get to the bus stop by just heading up the, the road, the long road that, that took us down. Um, we'd not done it in the daylight, we'd only sort of been driven down in the dark, so we didn't really know uh, that direction at all. Um, we turned the wrong way. <laughs> we got, we got to, like, we, we, we went the wrong way. 
Um, and we ended up doing this really, uh, really, really hard hour long circuit of a walk. And when I say it was really hard, I mean like 90% of it was like this. Um, so we kind of realised about halfway up of, of the hill that was like this, that we, we were heading in the wrong direction, but there was a way of sort of like looping it back around. Although by that time we, we, we kind of said, you know what, the way through the golf course is the easiest. From now on, we'll just we'll just stick to going through the golf course. That's the best way of doing it. Um, so we worked out there was a way of sort of like looping back around to where we needed. It's fine, we're following it along. And then we got to this point where there was this dirt road which looked like it was running parallel to the one that we needed. And we were like, you know what, that's that's a little bit safer. There's not going to be traffic coming along there. It's probably not listed on Google Maps because they don't always list um, footpaths, especially the ones which are a bit like less um, less paved. They they like, they'll yeah to yeah they they don't tend to uh, to list like the dirt track type ones. Um, so we started heading along there. And then we ended up at the golf course, <laughs> right by our cabin. Um, so we're like, okay, fine. We know now, definitely don't go that way. Um, but obviously by that point, we were quite tired from this hour long walk. So we were like, you know what? We know how to get from here up to, um, up to the golf resort. I mean, we took a couple of turns that like it, it all kind of looped round, but like we, we made note of everything that we were doing and made note of all the alternatives that could potentially be easier ways of going through it, which we then used um, on subsequent adventures. Um, so yeah, it was very much that kind of situation. So the walk, which should have taken us 25 minutes, ended up taking us about an hour and a half. Um, so by the time we got to the bus stop, we were very tired. <laughs> Um, and we were both like, okay, we're going to be in Saltash for about lunchtime. We will eat before we go to the golf course. Um, fortunately, the bus trip itself wasn't that long. Um, so we were in Saltash by about 11.30, <laughs> which gives you an indication of roughly when we'd set out. Um, so yeah, we we were in Saltash by about 11.30. We, we picked ourselves up some food. Um, we, we took a seat, seat on a nearby bench, we ate, we then headed towards the golf, um, the, the adventure golf place, we got lost again, <laughs> not like majorly, just a little bit of a detour, because it was like this, the way the sign was posted, it wasn't completely clear which street it was pointing down, we, we quickly sort of course corrected once we kind of went, like, this doesn't look right, we stopped, checked the maps, we headed back up the, well, the the wrong turns seem to involve us then having to deal with really steep hills. Um, it was not it was not the hardest walk sort of getting there, but because we were already tired from the hard walk that we'd done before, it, it probably felt a lot harder than it, than it should have. We got to the Adventure Golf Place and it looked like it was shut, even though like the sign on it said that it, was, it should be open at that time of year and at that time of day. Um, and the website had said the same, we did eventually find out that yes, it was open and we were given the stuff that we needed to play and we were the only ones there. It's like it was opened for us so that we could go in because obviously it, like, it was opened, it's just because nobody had asked to do it that day, it was closed for that reason. So we had like the run of the whole place, obviously we had our little plushy monkey gator with us and because we were the only ones there, that allowed us to have a little bit more fun and creativity with some of the pictures that we'd taken. We'd already sort of made an agreement that we wanted to take a picture of Monte Gator at every single hole um, to create the Monte Golf. <laughs> um, but because there was no one else there, we, we were able to do like silly poses alongside it. We were able to find like the silly places to put it. It didn't matter if we were taking a little bit longer sort of doing that kind of stuff beforehand because there wasn't anybody that we were interrupting. We weren't, you know, waiting on anybody or anything like that. So it was like a really, it was really nice for us to have been the only ones there. Um, it was actually quite a, it was quite a good little course. There was only like one point between us at the end. I got a hole in one, on one of the holes, which is very unexpected. Um, actually, it was not actually the easiest of holes to have gotten a hole in one on. I just got very lucky. <laughs> um, 
so anyway that was a lot of fun um we then once once we sort of finished um we asked in the place that had given us the golf course uh, the golf clubs and and ball and that if there you know if there was anywhere we could get ice cream essentially they directed us to the um main part of the the, uh, uh, the resort that we were on <laughs> i say resort club club that we were on i suppose that would be the better way of putting it uh so we went in we got ourselves some very generous scoops of ice cream um and then we made our way back to towards salt ash um we took it a little bit like a little bit slower pace um we got to back to salt ash without an hour to spare before the next bus because the, the buses were pretty much hourly uh, so we picked up some like, like extra drink because having we, we hadn't factored having a day just at the cabin um when we've been buying the food uh so we did need to pick up some like extra drink and stuff uh just to, to sort of tide us through uh which we then end up having right till the last day so so you know we ended up being <laughs> we ended up being fine there um we then went found a, a little pub just to sit in um just you know just to <laughs> just to have somewhere nice and calm to sit. Um, the cute friend got themselves a drink. Um, I, by that point, was feeling a little bit too full to have anything to drink, so I was like, no, I'm not good for anything drinking anything at this point. Um, but we sort of like sat in there for about 20 minutes, we made it back to the bus stop with about 10, 10 minutes to spare before the bus got in, and then we, we sort of headed back, and then, um, because that particular day also happened to be my birthday, um, we went out, an evening for a meal with my dad and stepmom, which was also very nice, and that you know that was one of the reasons why we'd sort of headed into Saltash for that particular day, so that um, because we knew we had a bit more of a time constraint there, uh, we could sort of it was like a, it was the easiest travel, it was the shortest travel that for someone we could get to, uh, and it was something that we decided very early on in the, like the trip planning phases that we really wanted to do. That was the whole reason we got the Monty Gator. <laughs> um so yeah we were we were really happy with that uh we ended up getting back to the cabin about an hour ahead of when we'd sort of like said oh this is the latest we should be back by um which wasn't necessarily a bad thing um because although the cute friend had already always sort of planned to have a shower before they got changed into what we were planning to wear for going out for the evening um i don't normally worry too much about things like that because I don't normally sweat that much <laughs> which like I know that's a bit gross to sort of talk about um but because of all the extra walking that we wouldn't normally have done it was actually a fairly warm day as well um I got to the point where I was like you know what I wouldn't normally but like this is working in the middle of a heat wave kind of feeling for me so you know what I'm just gonna jump into the shower and, and freshen myself up as well uh, which as I said I wouldn't normally do so like having a little bit of extra time there sort of helped um and then on the because of because we were both so knackered from all that additional walking uh we'd sort of left it a little bit open for what we were going to do on the final day um we'd originally kind of hoped to go down to the bodmin prison attraction um but the more we sort of like thought about it and, and realized you know it wasn't the easiest of places for us to get to um and we just kind of got to a point i think um midway through on uh on the second day when when we were starting to feel a bit more tired because we'd done we'd done an extra amount of walking that we hadn't needed to do um that it might have been a bit more of a hassle especially because we'd have to be on and we'd have to have made sure that we were up early and we were out early um, I mean, like, the getting up early wasn't so much of a struggle, but because we'd been so tired from all the additional walking, we didn't want to sort of be having to put ourselves into that position um, without, you know, really sort of thinking about it and, 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 and whatever else. So, and then, then it was also, then we'd have to factor in how much it was going to cost because it was going to be at least two buses and potentially two trains plus the price of entry. And we were just like, yeah, we just got to a point where it's like it's not it's not worth it um for what is essentially an hour and a half um just looking around so we'd left ourselves a little, then left ourselves a little bit open for what we were going to do depending on how we were feeling we were either going to just 
have another lazy day or just jump on the, the bus heading in, away from Plymouth <laughs> um, and then seeing um, and then still, you know, just going to one of those locations. Um, and in the end, we decided to go to Bude, which was about an hour and a half on the bus. Um, and we were there for a couple of hours. We had a nice lunch out. Uh, we had a little bit of a walk along the waterfront and we had some more ice cream. So of course, that's what you do when you go to Cornwall, you have ice cream. Um, and we came back and we had a, had a takeaway in the evening. Um, so yeah, all in all, it was really, really great for like all the, all the like little things that we'd done during the day. All three of those days we also played, uh, so we got some of the exit um, escape room board games. Um, so we played one of those each day. Um, they were very interesting experiences. Um, a lot of the puzzles in all of the games, and the, and the games we played on the second and the third day um, were probably, the puzzles were probably the best. Um, the first one, because obviously neither of us had done that style of escape room box game before, so we weren't really knowing what we were, we, what to expect, and it was also the only one that kind of did it in like the weirdest way as well, sort of as, you know, after we'd sort of experienced the other two, it was the outlier, um, and some of the puzzles were really good, um, well a lot of the puzzles didn't make a lot of sense, um, in terms of both, um, not not giving you enough information um and like it was the one we used the most help cards for um and a lot of the time all the help cards would tell us is that either we had the things that we needed to figure out or we didn't have the things that we needed to figure out because it was really hard to tell um because you were kind of given too much in one go and no clear um way of distinguishing what you should be doing in what order um but the there were still some sort of like interesting puzzles with it um although i i would argue that was the the weakest in in all the aspects the other two that we played like most of the puzzles like the on the second day so we sort of started it before going out with um my parents um there like we, we whizzed through a, a lot of the early ones um absolutely whizzed through them and then the one that we ended up being stuck on, the puzzle itself had a misprint. So we did actually have to do the solution card as well. And that's when we were kind of like, this thing that they say should be on here is maybe it's, it's not on it at all. Um, and we were fairly confident that that was a misprint. Um, obviously by that point we were a lot more tired because we'd, Obviously, we'd gone out, we'd come back a couple of hours later, we'd been tired from the wrong day anyway, and because we, that kind of like put a little bit of slant on it, uh, we did, didn't struggle with the rest of the puzzles for that one exactly, um, but I think we just got to a point where we were too tired for those puzzles. We did sort of manage to get to the end relatively okay. Uh, I don't think we used too many more hint cards after that, but we did keep having to use hint cards after that because we, we were just sort of tired and I think a little bit fed up because that because of that misprint um and then the one that we played on the third day puzzles were really really great um it wasn't always like there was a little bit of you could do it in any order so you were getting things from like things that you'd need later on early and it was hard you didn't always know what you would need for everything once you kind of worked out what you needed and what what you should be doing probably used the least uh, amount of hint cards for it the, the puzzles were probably the best constructed of the three that we played um but the final puzzle the final pu puzzle was not clear in its execution and even after we'd like taken the solution card we struggled to understand like how we were supposed to solve it um and then we sort of ended up like googling it and googling somebody else um like youtube watching somebody else sort of like doing that final one and then from there we were we were able to kind of go oh yeah okay we get it but um it, it definitely put like a damper on the rest of the game because actually up until that point i think that was the one that we'd enjoyed the most um but the fact that that one was, it was, 
not illogical. It was just the thing that you needed was so unclear. Um, especially like when you're tired, um, which we were starting to get quite tired again by that point because obviously we, we, we'd been playing in the evening and, and we'd sort of like ordered the takeaway and we'd again been a little bit interrupted by the takeaway as well. We hadn't stopped playing, but it, 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 it was enough of a distraction where, you know, especially being tired and everything else. But yeah, I, it, it, it was kind of, it was an unsatisfying ending to what had been a really good game with it, um, where it had been sort of like not really difficult, but not um, impossible with its like whatevers. Um, so I think we had been enjoying that one the most um, until that sort of like really put the damper on it again. So. I mean, it was good experience. It was a fun experience. Um, I think we both have agreed that we'd be looking into um, escape room boxes by other companies um, just to sort of compare the differences and see if, um, as we feel like, and, and this is something that, you know, we sort of like read and, and have become aware of since, um, that um, a, a lot of their, the, this, their particular games are flawed in execution not saying that they're impossible not saying that they're not that they're unfair just that there are little bits here and there which don't always uh, work as well as they should um so so yeah it, it's it's one of those things where there are other companies out there that make them and especially for games that you're only gonna play, you, you can physically only play once um if you kind of feel a bit gypped during it um for whatever reason um then it can like put a damper on the whole thing um but yeah i mean we, we enjoyed playing them for the most part um you know they were very entertaining for the most part they were challenging for the most part um but each each game had its own problems which meant that although we enjoyed it we weren't like necessarily enjoying it as much as we could and the fact that you could only play it once was one of those things that then didn't help <laughs> in a lot of ways um so yeah uh yeah it was all in all it was very very good <laughs> um would definitely if the opportunity was there would definitely want to go to that place again uh, definitely want to go on holiday with a cute friend again that that goes without saying but probably would look into other places um because although we made it work it was not the most accessible without a vehicle we did know that going in but we kind of went yeah no, we'll, we'll we'll figure it out we'll figure it out it's fine um but yeah it, it's definitely better if you have a vehicle um but you know at the same time it's just it, it was manageable, we made it work as I said, uh, would have helped if we didn't get lost on the second day, we then would have had more time in Saltash, we might have been able to do a few other things, but you know, as it was, as it all worked out, it was perfectly fine, perfectly reasonable, um, it was a very good holiday, all in all, if I do say so myself. Um, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, so I hope you found this one sort of interesting, I hope you're looking forward to seeing whatever it is I'm going to talk about next time, and I will see you next time. See ya! If you've enjoyed this video, consider checking out some of my others, and if you like what you see, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, see ya!